cash, asset, cash. Stop letting societal norms, right? Education, traditional education. The government, you're getting a, a refund. The banks, you're getting buried in debt. Um, the school system, teach you how to be a follower, not a leader. Stop letting societal norms keep you from learning the philosophy that those who are, that you look up to, learn a long time ago. Welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show with Jonathan Jones. Here you will learn how to start, launch, and monetize your podcast. In addition to hearing the latest trends and the latest and greatest things happening in the podcast industry. Are you ready? What's going on, family? And welcome to the Your Podcast Mentor Show, where this is your go-to for podcast news, podcast how-tos, and also interviews. And, you know, I'm, I'm very honored today to have the opportunity to be sitting in, in the living room with the man, the, the myth, the legend, Mr. Brian Bean. How, how, how we doing, sir? I'm good, man. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. I'm <laughs> glad to be here, man. Anytime we can help some people, I'm sure we're going to inspire some people. You are definitely good at what you do, so I like talking to quality people, and I'm sure the audience is just as quality. So I love it. Yes, sir. Yes, I'm sir. Good. Yes, sir. Most definitely. So I'm, I'm going to kick it over to you now. I'm going okay. to give you the opportunity just to you know, give a brief snapshot of who you are and, and what you do for those people who might you know, might be living uh, in, in, a, in a cave or something like that. But, man, go ahead. Take, take the mic. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, throw you an alley-oop or something. <laughs> Jonathan got me on the spot. Okay. No, seriously. Um, my name is Brian Bean, um, affectionately known as the mentor of millions. I basically teach three things, mindset, message, and money. To me, those are the three things I've learned being an entrepreneur over the past 25 years. If you master positivity, if you master the law of attraction, um, if you master the mind and, and its tricky ways, um, if you have a message you can get to others, you can always make money. So I teach people those three things in a very, very, very unique way, right? Um, the mindset piece I teach using a training called Animal Instincts mm -hmm. or Tap Into Your Instincts. And that's why I study different animals and I show you how that quality that they use to survive in their habitat, you should adopt the same philosophy of yours, being the uh, most intelligent form of, or the most intelligent species on the planet, but we're the weakest emotionally. So if God made you in his image, I tell people, if God made you in his image, and you believe in God, you believe you are a child of God, then why are you so weak? Mm. You really think about it. Ooh. So I look at other species that he developed, right? The bee, I mean the honeybee, the silverback gorilla. I mean, my catalog is full of the rhinoceros, the cobra, the snow leopard, the ant, the eagle, the tiger, the jaguar. And I take their qualities and I show you how to put those in you so you can be that person that you're supposed to be. Um, so that's my mindset series. It's called Instincts. Yeah. I just recently created Monetize Your Message. That's where I teach people how to take their tribulations in life and turn them into celebrations. Mm -hmm. We've all been through something. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. People look at people like myself, you, successful people, they look at us today and they don't think we pay some dues. So I teach people how to turn every tribulation you've been, uh, you've experienced into a celebration. And then I teach you how to monetize that message and get that message out to the world and make money doing it at the same time. So yeah. long story short, man, I'm the go-to person for making, saving, and growing your money using mindset, message, and money. Mm. So in, in 25 years of entrepreneurship, like, Looking back, like what, what what would you tell the younger self? Oh man! Right now? Well, the funny thing about it is, I started when I was young. Mm -hmm. I started mm -hmm. entrepreneurship when I was nineteen years old. So I only worked a job for ninety days before I retired uh, when I was twenty-two years old. So I went to Morehouse College, started my business at nineteen. By the time I was 22, my degree became my backup. Like most people, their degree, they fall back on something. I mm. fell back on my degree. Mm. You know what I mean? So to answer your question, by the time I was 22, um, I was retired, man, and I, and I haven't worked a job since. I made enough money to basically make more money in a month than I, my job was paying me all year. Now, what I would tell my younger self to answer your question is don't blow it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blow it, man. Actually, I didn't blow it. I lost my first million dollars in my 20s because I got off. Mm. Nobody taught me that, you know, you got to keep good records. Nobody taught me 
that you know these faded receipts don't count when the IRS do want to see your proof. <laughs> nobody your deductions. Nobody taught me that every dollar you make is supposed to bring you five dollars, and you take five dollars and you spend two of them, and you reinvest three to make ten, and you keep three of those and you take seven, reinvest those to make thirty. Mm -hmm. Nobody taught me that money's a tool, and you're supposed to work for money. You're not supposed to work for money. Money's supposed to work for you. So I would tell my younger self to make the million dollars the first time and keep it, so I won't have to make it again and again and again. Mm, okay, so you, so you got audit. Talk, talk about talk about that because yeah. knowing the numbers yeah. is something that that that's not sexy or that's not you know that, 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 that's not the one that's really just hey know your numbers. Everybody's yeah. like ooh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't nothing you jump up and down for. Yeah, it ain't even, it's not even so much knowing your numbers. See, you gotta understand. I was 24, 25. This is back before apps. Where now? Mm. See, the reason you let me, let me set this up. The reason. I got audited. I don't know about everybody else, but the reason mm -hmm. I got audited is because my CPA at the time put some things on my Schedule C that would draw a red flag now that I'm older. Uh, I, I would have audited me too. Uh, like, you can't write off certain square footage in your house. If I'm saying this house is being used for a home based business, and let's say this house is 4,800 square feet, well, 4,000 of it can't be business. <laughs> that, that only leaves the bathroom and the kitchen, right? <laughs> so there's certain things he put on my Schedule C looking back, I'm like, I would have honored you too. So it triggered a red flag. And people don't need to be afraid of being honored. Let me just be clear. Mm -hmm. Like if they came after me now, I wouldn't be afraid. Don't be afraid of being honored. Be afraid of not being prepared if they come. So when they ask me for these receipts, so Mr. Bean, you said you spent $10,000 in Tahiti. I did. Well, where are those receipts? Well, here's one of them. Well, it looks like, to us, that looks like $10. I'm like, nah, no, but it's three more zero. <laughs> you don't see the comma? <laughs> no, nah, it's faded. Well, Brian, you said you spent uh, 80 grand taking your team to Aruba. Well, I did. Well, here it looks like 8,000 because the receipt is faded. Uh -huh. Now, y'all don't have to worry about that because you got an app. You can take a picture of the receipt, upload the receipt to the cloud. Put in what, where, why, how, and when. That's what the IRS wants to know. Mm -hmm. What, when, where, why, what, when, where, how, and when. Mm -hmm. oh, wait, wait, excuse me. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. why, when, where, and how. There we go. Now you put that in the app, the app store in the cloud, so if they come after you, I just print this thing out and say, here, here go all the proof, here go all the records. So don't be afraid of being audited. Be afraid of not being prepared when you get audited. Mm -hmm. Make your money. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. And this goes to some of my mindset training. People are actually afraid to make money out of fear of the IRS. How dumb is that? Mm. Man, I had one guy tell me, man, I don't want to make that money, man. Then you got then you got to pay them taxes. Well, you're paying them anyway. <laughs> so why don't you make more? And there are ways as you get wealthy to pay less. But people are afraid of the unknown. So it's not a sexy topic, but it's a topic you need to address or your money's gonna be sexy for the IRS. Mm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you okay, so you're saying don't 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 be fearful of making the money because of the IRS. I want you I want you to talk about this though, because you yeah. you saying this talking about fear, you brought up something that, that, that kind of just threw me off. What about those who are fearful of their own success? Yeah. Like they're like like they self-sabotage yeah. because they're fearful of what could be. Yeah. And they don't realize that they're even doing it. That's the sad thing. Mm. It uh, self-sabotage comes in the form of excuses. You know, Brian, you don't understand. They got kids. No, I understand. Brian, you don't understand. I just got divorced. No, I understand. Brian, you don't understand. I just got let off. No, I understand. But every excuse you give me, I tell my clients, I put those excuses into reasons. Mm. Brian, I got kids. You don't understand. That's not your excuse. That's your reason you need to do what I'm telling you. Brian, that's got laid off. You don't understand. No, that's not your excuse. That's your reason. So what happens is people who self-sabotage don't even realize that subconsciously they're doing it because they're afraid of the success. And the reason they're afraid of the success is because society shows in our country loves individuals who rise and then fall. And they put more emphasis on the fall than they do the bounce back. Mm. So everybody hears that MC Hammer lost $30 million and how can you lose all that money we can't touch this? But nobody tells you that Hammer actually is the first person to put Twitter on the map. Nobody tells you that Hammer is a genius when it comes to marketing and 
social media. Nobody tell you the hammer made millions of dollars for his consultations now. Mm -hmm. But everybody just know when he was had the diapers on, he was running back and forth <laughs> <laughs> doing the typewriter. They want to, they, everybody look at the brother's fall, but they don't look at his bounce back. Everybody talk about Mike Tyson losing three hundred million dollars, but they don't tell you right now Mike Tyson owns ATM machines in Vegas. Mm -hmm. So society puts more of the fall in front of you because that's sexier than they do the bounce back. So no wonder subconsciously people don't want to rise too high because in our society, you the higher you are, the further you fall. Who made that up? Mm. You know what I mean? So we do things, a lot of people do things so that they won't have to experience the unknown. I don't want to make money because I hear about Lauren Hill's tax problems. I hear about uh, uh, Ryan Osley's tax problems. It's, it's our culture. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. White folks don't go, I don't want to make no money because you heard what happened to Willie Nelson. <laughs> Willie Nelson had tax problems too. I never heard that. Yeah, yeah. see, nobody knew that's just our culture. You know, man, you heard about what happened to Wesley Snipes? You heard about what happened to Lauren Hill? You heard about what happened to Ryan Osley? See, that's our culture. So we rather stay where we are in known hell than experience unknown heaven. Why, why is that our culture? Yeah, because think about it, man. This whole, the educational system in America, and I'm not trying to be radical, okay. but what I'm about to say is just the truth, okay? The educational system in America puts not just black people, but people in general in a position to be more of a consumer than a producer. In other words, you'll get the Jordans, but won't invest in Nike. Mm -hmm. You'll get the PlayStation, but won't invest in Sony. So America and the school system is run by corporations. Corporations need you to produce employees to work for them. The reason the government will go for it is because if you get employees, more people will pay their taxes. The code for a W-2 is to pay the taxes off the what? Off the top. If corporate America ever endorsed entrepreneurship, which they wouldn't, the government, I mean, if the government ever endorsed entrepreneurship, corporate America would get less taxes because entrepreneurs pay ourselves first and pay the government last and don't have to go to corporate America. Mm -hmm. So the educational system, the government, the school systems, and the media and religion, but I'm going to leave that alone because it's a sensitive subject, all kind of work together to make sure people stay of a consumer mentality, not a producer mentality. Now you ask, why us? The scenario I just gave is for everybody in America. They'd rather you be a consumer than a producer. Mm -hmm. They'd rather you be a contributor to capitalism than a participant. Now you add the African American experience on top of that, where you're constantly told you're not good enough by the media. You're constantly told as a little kid that Santa Claus is white. You're constantly told that Jesus had this looks like this. You're constantly told by the police that your death and your chokehold and your bullet in your back seven times and being shot. 39 times that that means nothing because these people have got off for so long. So you had a, a flawed educational system on top of the African American diaspora and you toast if you don't get some self-education. Period. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to figure out. Yeah. So how, how, does, how does one start? Okay, so let, let's say one is in the mindset of what you're saying. Like, let's say they're at the bottom of that mindset. Right. How does one start in terms of self-educating? So what you have to do is, is it's simple, but it's not easy. Mm. It's simple, but it's not easy. You have to get the attention of a mentor. Let me say what I mean. Mm, break that down. People say, go find a mentor, go find a mentor. Yeah, but your mentor, he's, if he's worth anything, his time is valuable, so he got to kind of charge an arm and a leg for his mentorship. Now, I'm not saying mentors don't have free things they give. Mm -hmm. I, I do it all the time, right? If I charge the arm and the leg for everything, um, you probably wouldn't be here. 
Right? But I'm like, uh, Jonathan, just so you know, uh, for my knowledge and expertise, uh, you can come by the house, but uh, I need ten thousand dollars. No, I, I do this because I want people to learn, and I do this because I respect what you know. Right? So every mentor has some free value they better be giving away because you owe it to people. What I mean is for you to go from the bottom of where you're talking about all the way up to where you're trying to get, you got to join some masterminds that cost five figures. I've done it so many times. You got to pay four figures here for a course, five figures here for a mastermind, six figures a year for my, um, the education that I've received. I don't mind paying that stuff because that's why I'm on the way to being worth eight figures. Mm. So what's my point? You have to do enough sweat, you have to put in enough sweat equity into something that you enjoy. You got to put enough due diligence into something that you find, really believe in and find, find value in. And then now when you come to a mentor, you earn his respect and earn the slot at the table so he can bring you into other circles. But most people want mentorship and they haven't done anything yet. Right? Hmm. Uh, people tell me this all the time. Brian, I just want to pick your brain. I'm like, ugh. <laughs> uh, I, I know what you're saying. And you can pick my brain. But that's just the wrong entry. It's just, it's just the wrong entry. Because the more money you make, the more valuable your time is. And you never really want to tell a mentor you just want to sit down and pick his brain. If you haven't already, now you can pick my brain if you've already done, but it's some questions I'm going to ask you to make sure you've already done a lot of stuff so that when you pick my brain, we, we're supposed to be going from here to here. Not just picking my brain on surface level. I got too much free stuff on YouTube that you can get all that for free. You got a lot of game on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I got too much game on YouTube. When you come pick my brain, let's take you from good to great, not bad to good. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. Man, that makes sense. Yeah, I gotta make sure people got skin in the game. Mm hmm Earn your mentors uh, time. Earn, show them that you're worthy of one of those slots at the table. You know what I mean? And that's what I did. When I was coming up in the speaking world, people wonder why it comes so easy for me to speak or teach people how to speak or how I come up with multi-million dollar frameworks and formulas and fundamentals. Those are the three things I teach my speaking clients how to create frameworks, formulas, and multi-million dollar uh, fundamentals. And they wonder why. Well, think about it. For, of my 25 years speaking on stages, the first 10 were spent under the tutelage of other people watching them speak. So by the time they pulled my number and it was time for me to hit the stage, I'm like, I'm ready. So, you see, you might see Lisa Nichols has endorsed me. Les Brown has endorsed me. This is video. This is on YouTube, right? This, is, this, is, this ain't no lie. People, I don't have to lie. I don't have to make stuff up. Why did they endorse me? Well, you can tell somebody that's just in it for fame, and you can tell somebody that's in it because they are gifted and love to do it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I earned over the years the respect of your mentors by putting that sweat equity in first. So listen, it was like, I love to endorse you. I'm like, well, shoot, you ain't got to ask me to <laughs> Hey, <laughs> this is my good friend Lisa Nichols. She haven't asked me twice. She did the video. And people are like, man, you I'm like, yeah. So earn the respect of the giants whose shoulders you stand on to get to where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you yeah, but it takes a sweat. Yeah, yeah. That, that's good. That's mm -hmm. good. Man, ten so ten years. You was ten years, you was like Ten years I was underground. Kind of, I was underground. Believe it or not, Jonathan, and a lot of people don't realize this, realize this, I'm kind of still under the ground now. There are a lot of people who you guys see speak right now that you wouldn't believe was on this sofa. I helped them write their first speech. I'm not like a ghostwriter. Yeah, there are a lot of people that y'all know right now that if you would have really, if they would have tell the truth, and I'm not saying they're lying, but yeah, they got the idea. They got a lot of their frameworks and 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 fundamentals and formulas right here in this over. Yeah, I sat down and wrote it with him and showed him, like, okay, get up, let me see you do it. No, take that out, do this. I wrote it. What? The, oh, so yeah. you, you keep you keep talking about these, these these fundamentals and these frameworks. I have to ask you, what what is in a million dollar framework or fundamental of right. conveying a message? Okay, so all right, so I'll give you an example. So anytime 
this is the first course I teach my clients of, of the eight weeks or 12 weeks, depending on what they want to sign up for. If you're not teaching in a framework, you're doing yourself a billion dollar disservice. Mm -hmm. Because a, a framework is something that can be passed down, right? The reason Stephen Covey, God rest his soul, is still like the number one bestseller because it's seven habits of highly effective people. So a person, an institution can take that framework and give it to their instructors at the institution who can teach the students at the institution from the handbook that the instructors are giving them from his institution. So it's a framework. A framework is something you can pass down, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if I teach my people the five levels of impact, that's a framework. The five levels of impact your story and your keynote can have on people. Go from level one to level five. If I teach people, there are four types of keynote addresses I'm going to teach you. And by the time you leave my course, you're going to have at least one or two, should you choose to go to the advanced level, keynotes that you can make money off of, right? If I teach people, there are six things you need to do or six steps you're going to go through once you start making money as a speaker. And I'm going to show you how not to make the mistakes I made. So what I just did, I just gave you six, five, four. Mm. So that's a framework. Six steps your finances are going to go through. Don't make the same mistakes I made. Make a million dollars and keep it and grow it. So you ain't got to make it twice. Five levels of impact that your story and keynote is going to have on your audience. Four keynotes. You see, so I call it six, five, four. Mm. And then I give you three, two, one. You see what I'm saying? Wow. Right. There are three obstacles you got to overcome. There are two types of, of, of uh, productivity. There are two types of um, payment you can receive from being a speaker. And I'm the one guy that's going to teach you all of this. So it's six, five, four, three, two, one. That's a framework. So when you teach something, if you teach it in a multi-million dollar framework, as long as you've proven yourself and you've made that type of money, then people will respect that you're coming from here. You know what I mean? And when you're coming from here, people can tell. If I really want my clients to take my place on stage, I gotta give them the best frameworks. So I got people that I've actually trained, that I've actually given some of my frameworks to, and now they do extremely well. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm gonna get with you. We're gonna put the. We're gonna get the link in the show notes, and so yeah. people can, you know, people can see 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 what you what you got cooking. Absolutely. That's good. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. Yeah. Six five four three two one is one of my most popular frameworks for speakers. That makes you know sense. Yeah. That's that's cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, like I, honestly, because you know, like, because I, you know, I, I go to colleges to speak, and I, I've spoken with a few staff. Yeah. But it's it's just interesting because you breaking that down like that. Then when somebody comes to you. You're like, okay, well, what, what, are you, what are you facing? And then you can just identify. Compartmentalize. Okay, yeah, you need this. Exactly. You need that. Every, everything's a framework. When I first did my instincts training, so this is my mindset piece. I told you, I'm mindset, message, and money. Mm -hmm. So we just talked about message, speaking. On the mindset piece, um, it's funny because I don't force it. I just kind of let the universe shape it. So I started with the tiger because that's my favorite animal. Okay. Right, and I don't know if the camera can catch it, but if you look around here, man, you, there's an owl, an owl up here. There's a statue I got from when I took my son to Africa back there. The five big game. There's a leopard up there. Animals there. Oh, right. So <laughs> the tiger I started with. Then I went to the eagle. Then I went to the owl. Then I went to the uh, honeybee. Then I went to the snow leopard, the king cobra, the jaguar, the silverback gorilla, the rhinoceros, um, the praying mantis. Then when I got Bean Acres, I got five ducks that couldn't swim. Hmm. Cause they were born on farms. Okay. It's called imprinting. So a duck mimics the first thing it sees. And if that's not his mother, he'll mimic a chicken if he's born on a farm. So my five ducks, I didn't know this, couldn't swim. Now people say, of course they can swim, it's God given. I know they can swim. What I'm saying is they didn't, they were afraid to get in the water. Hmm. I actually taught them how to swim. Not getting the water with them, but I had to do certain things to show them that this lake I have, I got for ducks. Y'all ain't gonna be over here acting like no chickens. So what's my point? Then I took the animals and I put them into a framework after I developed them. So now, so species are real simple. Reptiles, birds, amphibians, mammals, um, 
reptiles, birds, amphibian, mammals. It didn't mean a second. But like, you know, you break them down into categories, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. I gotta give you at least one more. Reptiles, birds, amphibian, mammals, aquatics, fish. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Alright. Now you you frame it where mammals, leadership. You see what I'm saying? Okay. Birds, goal setting. Cause they fly high. Uh, you see what I'm saying? So if a bird, birds fly high, you set your goals even higher. So my bird sequence may be on goal setting, right? Mammals may be on leadership. You see it? It makes sense. Aquatics may be on vision. Cause under that water, you gotta be able to see it. So you create the framework a lot of times after you've done the work. So people struggle sometimes because they like, I don't know where to start. Well, if you start, we can frame it later. Earn your mentor's time. So if you come to me with some pieces, I can help you frame it, but at least you gotta show me that you started with something. Now don't get me wrong, you can have nothing and we can create something too. Mm -hmm. But I'm mm -hmm. just saying, you wanna, you wanna be in a mindset of creating ultimately a framework that you can monetize. So now companies hire me to come in and teach my instinct series. So now they flip through the book, but we have a conversation, I'm like, what are you guys struggling with? I'll give you an example, Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Now, they hired me one time to come in. The EMTs were not motivated. The EMTs are, like, people think it's all the same, but it's not. The EMTs drive the actual ambulance, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in your ambulance, you got three people. You got the EMT, you got the RN, and you got the respiratory therapist. So you got the RT, respiratory therapist, okay. the RN, and the EMT. Mm -hmm. okay. I was brought in to Cincinnati Children's Hospital up in Ohio to to figure out why y'all feeling like y'all not part of the crew. And it was simple stuff that the RTs and the RNs were doing where the EMTs felt like they weren't giving them no respect. Like when they show up on the scene, some of the RNs would just be like, you know, you just drive. Like, no, he, he's just, he's not just as trained, but he can't be told that he's just a driver. He can help too. It was little stuff like that. So I went into my catalog and found the animal to fix this situation. Why? Because it's in a framework. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I went to find the underdog, how the underdog responds, and how the other RNs and RTs should start treating him so he won't feel that way. So companies hire me to come in and teach these animal instincts and how to improve production profits and um, personality. See, that's another framework. You heard it? Yeah, that's good. You see? That's good. You just you yeah. walk in framework. <laughs> walk in framework. Production, profits, and personality. So everything is framed up where I can just give you the package so I ain't got to sell myself. So it's packaged up so you don't have to sell yourself. Great. Why, why, is it so, why is it so important to not sell yourself? Well, it sounds, it sounds like a contradiction because you always hear in, the, in, this, in business, people are buying you. They're not buying the product or service. That's a good point. Right. And I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that. So mm -hmm. let me make sure, I, and I actually agree with that statement. So let me make sure I clear it up. What I'm saying is, in order to get in the door, I gotta sell myself once I get in the door. So that statement, that industry statement, I actually agree with that. A person mm -hmm. is selling, they're buying you, they're not actually buying the product. But what gets me in the door was how I have this stuff framed up for you to even wanna talk to me. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? There's not a whole bunch of people out there they have a catalog of 18 to 21 animals, and you pick the three animals based on the description I gave each one that best suits your problem. You understand? Mm -hmm. I got some government contracts. I did the Judication Review Board. Um, judication Review, just so you know, is when people have disability and you get denied, you gotta go before Judication Review Board of lawyers. You know, you gotta go, you gotta tell them why you need disability. Okay. Well, one of the hardest uh, industries to keep motivated is government employees. So Chattanooga, Knoxville, Macon, Georgia, uh, Columbia, South Carolina, um, uh, Tallahassee, Florida. I was the trainer for the adjudication review boards in about five or six offices. Okay. okay. Why did I get in the door? Because I gave them a framework first that made it easy to digest. They would have never hired me had I gone in there and said, well, let me tell you about the ducks. Ducks don't have blood vessels in their feet. So they never get cold feet, which means in life you gotta learn how to paddle, never get cold feet, and look smooth on top, but always work beneath. 
And they'd be like, this is the quirkiest thing I've ever heard. Now watch, put it in the framework. I want to show you how ducks, owls, eagles, and a peregrine falcon. I'm going to bring you four birds. And I'm going to show your employees how they adopt the philosophy of these four birds. Ducks never get cold feet. They perform well under pressure. See how it sounds different? It, I, well, for, for one, it does sound different, but the other part is, like, previous in previous time, you know, we've always heard about the, all these different personality assessments, mm -hmm. and it's, like, it, it's one of those things to where, I'm not going to say people are numb to it, but this is, this is old. Yep. This, this, this Red, is old. blue, green, yellow. Yeah, but yep. then when you come in different, when you come in different, it's like, what is this? Framed up. And then you're, yeah, and then you're looking at it, like, I'm going to give you four birds, you're like, what? Yeah. And then it's like, well, let's check the description. Right. And check. then they read it, and then they start to feel that there's some synergies. Like, wait a minute. Frameworks. Now I got to sell myself after that. But then that's what got me in the door with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who's the framework? So if I tell you eagles are the epitome of leadership, they fly directly into the storm. Eagles don't run from storms. When most birds, storms come, they find a place to go. The eagle says, oh, this is the perfect time for me to test it out and see if I still got it. You see? Really? Yeah. The Peregrine Falcon dies two, flies 260 miles an hour. Little baby bird. And he eats live birds. But to get to him, he flies on top of them. And you never see him coming. He comes down. So I teach people how to aim for their goals. You see what I'm saying? How? Mm -hmm. You know, and then come down and hit them. But go past your goals. Mm -hmm. You see? So leadership, goal setting, cold feet, no blood vessels, pressure. The owl sees through the darkness. We all don't have dark times in our life, but an owl has the ability to see through the darkness. That's why he's also synonymous with wisdom. You ever heard of the wise old owl? Mm -hmm. You see? So all these things don't work if I just come in and talk about birds. It's got to be what? Framed up so the client will want to talk to me. Then I go sell myself. And this makes sense. And you keep you keep bringing up birds and ducks. So now I want to pivot. <laughs> I, 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 want, I want to talk. I want to talk a little bit about about being acres. Just yeah, yeah. Where 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 did this idea come from? Mm -hmm. You know, for you to say, you know what? Let, let's like let, let's go ahead and you know let us go ahead and acquire this and break yeah. break down what what is being acres for people who don't know. Yeah. So being acres is a retreat. There's 20 acres of land I purchased um, here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's 20 acres. It has a pond. Where I actually shoot my pine cast. We're gonna get to that. Yeah, we're gonna get to that. Yeah, yeah. I shoot my pine cast on bean acres. And um it's 20 acres of land. And it's a house that I renovated on the property that I now created an income stream. See, see, once you learn the remember I told you mindset, message, and money, everything starts looking like an opportunity for you to create assets. It's not about getting greedy, it's about creating assets. So when I looked at it, I said, okay, with 20 acres, I can renovate the house. Now the house is an asset. It's on 20 acres, so now the front yard and the backyard are assets. People, it's so big that people can pull, we had 150 cars out there, and you can put a big screen out there, and we can have drive-in movie night for couples, and I can charge couples. The lake is in the back. That's an asset. I cut in four ATV trails. That's an asset. You see what I'm saying? I'm building an amphitheater on the lake so that as a speaker, when I speak, it looks like I'm kind of standing in the water, oh, but goodness. I'm on the platform. Oh my goodness. And the audience will be in the, um, the, the it's on a hill, and we're going to cut the rows in and have seating that looks like trees. So you're sitting on like a stub, a uh, tree trunk with a back. So you're sitting in the amphitheater while I'm speaking out there. But when I'm not speaking, somebody else can use it. That's an asset. So being anchors is like a, a, an executive retreat where we can come and teach kids agriculture. Um, um, you can come and ride ATVs after you sign the waiver. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can rent out the house that's on the property. Um, for, you know, I have people to stay there for two weeks. Uh, I have somebody that wanted to stay there for six months. I told them, no, I'm like, that's too long. I need, wow. to, get so long. I need to get in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I miss my own house. No, um, so yeah, so the reason being anchors was developed, honestly, I'm being honest with you. My first house was kind of unincorporated. It was just like on the, on the street, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Then I thought, I don't want a pool, but I want access to a pool. So I moved into a subdivision. Okay. Then you start learning about covenants and HOA, and you can't do this, and you can't. I'm like, ho, 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 ho. We pay all this money, and I can't what? That's true. You can't rent the clubhouse. And such, such. So they got, I'm like, you know what? So I know what I need. I need my own land. How about that? 
then you can't tell me who came part where, what part is to have, how loud the music can be, such and such complaining. So I, I, it was kind of a, uh, a, a transgression, you know what I mean? From an ascension, mm -hmm. from first house, cool. Subdivision, cool. But let me give this house to my son, and now we got 20 acres where I'm building my house at Bean Acres mm -hmm. with all those assets around it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's cool, man. Y'all got it. You gonna come to the podcast? I told you, yeah, I'm coming. Am I gonna interview you? Yeah, all right, all right. So tell me, you guys, so yeah, you can come to the podcast, man, and be my guest. So that's another asset I turned it into, right? Mm -hmm. If I got a pond or a lake, it just depends on how I want to play it. It's a pond, I'm gonna be on the podcast. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> we sit down and I want to talk to people who turn their tribulations into celebrations, and I get your story on the Instincts podcast. So because we're outside, I tie my animals into it, right? The podcast is my podcast, and we talk about life, and I got all these animal parallels, so it's a beautiful combination of my life's work all coming together. Hmm. Yep. Wow. Okay, well, what? How did, the, how did the idea come up for the podcast? And you keep, keep on saying podcast, podcast. Yeah. I'm like, we got to talk about it. So how, yeah. did, how, how, did that, how did that come about? Yeah, so... What happened was, I was doing podcasting back in 2004, 2005. Oh, I was wow. podcasting a long time ago. I just didn't know that that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Me and my four friends had a show called On The Spot. Hmm. And I was the money uh, expert, if you will. Another friend of mine was the political expert. He had a lot of political ties. Another friend of mine was from the streets. So he tell you what's going on in the streets. Another friend of mine, she was like our pop culture and fashion fashionista. Okay. So the four of us would talk every Tuesday and Thursday, and we built this audience. I just didn't know that that's what we was doing. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know how to monetize it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I didn't know how to monetize it. So I was like, you know, man, if I ain't making no money right now, man, this is a young, younger version of me. If I ain't making no money right now, we just talking to people every Tuesday and Thursday. I need to shut this down. So I stopped. Then... I saw my boy, shout out to David Shans. Shout out to Shans. I saw Shans do his podcast and start a course on teaching how to do it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, man, let me, if I just dust myself off, I know how to do it. Now he got the framework. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Then the courses, my man Shans came by being anxious. We gave him a tour. He, we on ATVs kicking it. I'm like, I need to do the podcast out here. I was like, Dave, I'm going to call it a podcast. So when you get around people who are similar, like-minded, God will just bring you all the energy. The juices just start flowing. So he inspired me to do a podcast. I bought Bean Acres. I got a pun. I call it a podcast. Mm -hmm. I got the animals that I teach on, so it's called the Instincts Podcast. And I was like, Dave, what you think, man? Should I do the Bean Acres podcast? Podcast? Should I do the, the Instincts podcast? Should I? He was like, he was like, I'm telling you, the animal thing that you do, That's it. and the, the podcast word, he was like, he was, I wrote it down, I had like four options. He was like, this is it. I'm like, hey, they right now got a hot podcast. Yeah. Let me just follow what he said. So I took this course, man. He inspired me to do it, and it's been amazing. It's been amazing. Yeah, you got to go check it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to check it out. Yeah, I'm, I'm and be featured. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. looking forward to it. I'm yeah. looking forward to it because because you, you're creating you're creating a different experience. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's a complete different experience that I haven't seen because it's not you know you're in studio. studio yeah. It's yeah. not a live studio audience. But even if you did decide to bring people out there live, then you know then it's a it's a different dynamic in itself. It is. Yeah. So it is. yeah. Once, yeah. once I build an amphitheater out there, man, who knows? It might be live tapings out there. Man. But but now you just got the birds. I got my ducks. You know who knows? We got some, we got serenity out there, and it's definitely it's a different vibe. All shot at being neighbors. Isn't that cool? Yeah. So it all kind of it all just kind of you know in the industry on the internet it's called circular vibe velocity, where you create multiple income streams from one effort. Mm -hmm. So now I teach a lot of people find your gift, live in it, and then create multiple income streams from one effort. So when you create that circle of our velocity, man, your life will line up and it won't even feel like work. Yeah. See, that's my thing. Like, it doesn't feel like work. It's making money with little effort. Not that you don't have to work hard, but I'm just saying it don't feel like work. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, because they're, they're, you know, because I, I, I believe I heard Charlemagne say it. He, he, he was talking about, he was like, you know, back when I used to do, I used to do this or this, he was talking about manual labor. He was like, that's hard work. Mm -hmm. But me going, interviewing some people, sitting on some panels, that's yeah, not hard work. Yeah, man, you got to change your perception of that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Hard so, work is the people who work that we admire and should respect. That guy's out there, man, in 80, 85 degree weather, 9 to 5, trying to do a jackhammer and do our highways. Shout out to him. That's hard work, and he's doing something that we all need. But I'm just not good at hard work. I'm I work hard, you. but it won't feel like it. I ain't even got your question. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. I'm right there with you. So let me, let me ask you this. Like when it comes to like 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 where you are now, mm -hmm. how do how do you find your mentors now? Being as accomplished as you are, doing what you've done, and you know what you're continuing to do, how do you find your mentors now to say, "That's I, I want to learn from this person." Yeah. So the same way I would if I was hiring somebody, right? Mm -hmm. You hire somebody if you have a problem and somebody else can fix it consistently better than you, right? Mm -hmm. So when I started my podcast, I had to hire an editor because I don't have time to edit. When I started a podcast, I had to hire somebody for, for booking so they could get the calendar out. And you got to understand, mine is weather contingent. So when we see seven days of sun, oh, you better believe we're about to shoot about 29 episodes, right? <laughs> so I got to book this person, book that person. You on at 1 o'clock, you on at 3 o'clock, you on at 5 o'clock, you on at 7 o'clock. You on at 1 o'clock, you on at 3 o'clock, you on at 5 o'clock. So the same way you hire somebody to what? Solve a problem. It's the same way I find a mentor who's proven, who's been consistent, and who's shown growth and elevation that can help me solve a problem. Mm -hmm. So I find a mentor by seeing what the results of their consistency and work ethic has brought them. You can't impress me with no cars, I got seven of them. You can't impress me with no house, I got 20 acres. You can't impress me with all those jewelry, because I where I come from, you get your stuff snatched anyway. So which what you can impress me with is your consistency mm. and your integrity. So I'm looking for a mentor that has that has shown some escalation in a certain field or endeavor. And his students have shown some escalation in a certain field or endeavor. And that's the person I'm gonna rock with that's gonna help me solve a problem. Not the person with the nicest car, not the person with the biggest house. Been there, done that, had that 22 years old when I was 22. So I'm looking for consistency and integrity. And that's what I'm looking for in a mentor. Yeah. And duplication. Mm -hmm. Man. Okay, okay. Okay, let, let me let me let me ask you this one then. Let, let let's say that, you know, you got the opportunity to go, go out to dinner with three people, mm -hmm. right? Who, who would be these three people that, that you want to go out to dinner with? You know, anybody in the world, whatever. You might already know them. You might already know them. <laughs> living or dead. The, li living or dead. Living living dead. Any, any, any three people, who, who are you going out to dinner with? Oh, that's that's crazy. Um, I definitely would go out to dinner with Tupac. Mm. I don't care what nobody say. I, I would go out to dinner with Tupac. I'm going to tell you why. People forget Tupac was 25 when he died. Mm. 25. Now, I don't care if you're a fan or not, go look at some clips of some of the stuff he was saying and tell me if you thought like that at 25. Tell me if you, if you raised by a Black Panther who ended up having a drug addiction, you were homeless in Baltimore, ended up going way out to the Bay, but you're from New York, so you got a New York culture, came down to the Atlantic region, went over there out to the West Coast, had poetic and acting skills and got in the rap game but also had endorsements in you know, corporate America before he went a little left when he got the sugar and all that. But if you look at this man at 25 years old, bro, the stuff that he was saying is still so prophetic now. Hmm. That's somebody's journey who I feel like people have forgotten but um, can't see it here, but I yeah, I, yeah, I definitely all the can't see it. It's a four by four picture I got. The only one in the world, the guy that did that, that, that drew that, made that. Um, definitely Tupac. This may sound um kind of redundant because I'm in the same genre, but I gotta talk to Jay Z, man. Mm. I gotta talk to Jay Z before a different reason. 
for you to be in a dope game, selling drugs and all that stuff, then decide consciously or subconsciously that you're not going to do that. Then start your own label because everybody told you no. See, people look at Jay today, but Jay wasn't rapping like he is now. He was that. He rapped more like the Foo Snickers. The bigger the Jay, the bigger the. So people are like, what's all this fast? No label like it. For you to go, you know what? I tell you what, y'all don't like me? I'm going to bankroll it myself then. The videos, the album, the studio time, I'm going to bankroll it myself. Then get the big boys to say, you're like your mentor. You've done enough. We see you. Now, we're not going to buy you out. We're going to partner with you mm. to get Dev Jam and all them guys to be like, we're going to partner with you. Then to jump out of that, become president of the company, then jump out of that and realize that that may not be the best for you, but then find Kanye, who's now another billionaire. <laughs> then marry Beyonce, who's at the top of her game. Then start or become an equity owner in Rock Nation. Then, I mean, how far do I need to go, man? I mean, <laughs> that to me, from where you come from, Marcy Projects, bro, mm. that's a serious, serious road to success. I mean, that's just, that's just, that's, I would, people say it's two rappers. Nah, it's two people. It's two people. It's not two rappers. If you listen to the description I gave both of them, they happen to get in the rap industry at some point. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference. There's a big difference between those, those stories, right? Mm -hmm. The third one, I have to say Bruce Lee. Like water. Like water, boy. Bruce Lee. I studied Wing Chun uh, for the past 10 years. Um, and man, for a guy to be just a little bigger than me, and I'm a small guy, for a guy to be just a little bigger than me, man, the power he had and the, the um, finesse with Kung Fu that he exhibited and the hate that he got for introducing the art to the Western world and the movie scene and his philosophy, like you said, be like water. People still quoting him today. You know what I mean? Water can flow, water can crash. Be like water, be water. For me to be a martial arts person, this is just, just not another person that I'd rather sit down and talk to like that. And he's just a little bigger than me to do the things that he was doing. I mean, how you throw from your hip, not your shoulder, not your arm. Your hip throws the punch. I mean, it's amazing the power he had, man, to be like 155. Mm. Yeah. How do you embody all of that, walk into a room and have a mental have a belief that you can take everybody in here out and be as humble as he was, knowing you're a walking weapon and just not have to ever use it? Mm. That's what you call real self-control. Man. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, man. For sure. That's good. That's yeah. good. We're about to wrap this thing up. About to wrap this thing up. About to, about to, about to get you out of here. Well, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay, man. I appreciate your time. Um, yeah. Man, okay. So I, I like like to have a little like to have a little bit of fun on the show. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a few rapid fire questions, and then we'll come back to you for the for the final word. Okay. So, so are you are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait, let me get that. Yeah, yeah, get, get, let me get, get rapidly ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go, here we go. All right. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Okay. Stocks or crypto? Crypto. Mm. All day, that's easy. Really? Crypto. Yeah, stocks are old. I'm not saying I don't have none, but crypto is the transition of wealth using the blockchain. So crypto is stocks with technology. Uh, okay, 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 okay. New school classic car. New school or classic car? Oh, I got four classics. Okay. Yeah, of those seven cars, three are regular and four of them are classics. Classics all day long. Made much better, easier to fix, uh -huh. get way more uh, value. They put, them, they put mine in music videos. Ain't nobody asked me to put my BMW on the photo shoot. <laughs> 
But they asked me to put that 51, that 61 Bentley on a photo shoot. They asked me for my 58 uh, T-Bird in a photo shoot, in a movie shoot. Those assets, everything is about assets for me. Okay. Vintage, all that. Speaking of engagement or a podcast? I'm gonna go with um, a podcast. Fair enough. That's it. I'm gonna go with the podcast. Why? Why is that? Because the podcast will bring me speaking engagement. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the difference would be with the podcast. There are a lot of people who won't resonate with me at all, but they'll mm -hmm. resonate with your story. And there's no way in the world I could tell your story because only you lived it. So mm -hmm. the reason I would pick the podcast any day is because we can reach more people if I have a bunch of different people here who've experienced things and overcome things that I never even imagined. So mm -hmm. I never like to make it about myself when I can make it about you. I feel like we can help more people and they'll get to know me over time. There it is, there it is. Absolutely. Okay. I'm about to hit this quick commercial and then I'm gonna come back to you for the final thought. Okay, cool. Okay. So uh, to all my speakers, my coaches, and my consultants out there, if you have not, I encourage you to go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com because that's the, that's the number one community not to just help you start, not to help you launch, not to help you monetize a podcast, but that's where we develop podcasters. All right, so go to getpaidwithpodcasting.com. I have a free gift for you there. And now back to get the final thought from Mr. Bean. That's it. My final thought. Real simple. Cash, asset, cash. Stop letting societal norms, right? Education, traditional education. The government, you're getting a, a refund. The banks, you're getting buried in debt. Um, the school system, teach you how to be a follower, not a leader. Stop letting societal norms keep you from learning the philosophy that those who are, that you look up to, learned a long time ago. Everybody you look up to has a philosophy. Let me get some cash. Let me buy, build, and grow an asset and turn that asset into some cash. People look at all the things I'm doing today, right? Bean acres, 20 acres, what will the trails, the lake, the pond cast, um, introduce, meeting people like yourself, speaking on stages, um, a monetizing message program. People look at everything I'm doing, but they miss it. What I'm doing is creating assets that create more cash so I can help more people, which creates more assets, in this case meaning people, not things, mm -hmm. and help them create more cash so they can help more people that will create more assets, which is people that bring more cash. Now you plan by the rules of the wealthy instead of getting played by the rules of the wealthy. Mm -hmm. So that's my part of words. Cash, asset, cash. Take some cash that you have, invest it in something. It don't have to be me. It don't have to be my courses. It don't have to be my coach. But invest it in something and take that asset to create more cash so we can help more people and change the way money flows in our community. Boom. Mm. That's simple. Period. Point blank. That's the simple truth of the matter. There it is. Yep. Mr. Brian Bean. My man. Good to see you, man. Appreciate you. I'm glad good. to be here. I'm good glad to be here. You. And I can't wait. You're on record for coming to the podcast. Yes, sir. All right. Let's go down there. All right, there it is. Well, family, you, you all heard it here first. Uh, and remember, 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 this is the Your Podcast Mentor Show where we help you build your platform so that you can profit from your podcast. Until next time, peace and God bless. Yeah.